welcome to the Courageous Self-Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, we get into self-care that goes beyond the boundaries of what we normally consider to be self-care. So we're not sharing how to go get manicures and go to the spa and get cucumbers on your eyes. You can figure that out on your own. For this kind of self-care, we're going inside. We're going deep. We're going to where it's unknown and mysterious and sometimes dark and terrifying. And for that reason, it's beneficial to have a guide. So here I am. And the other thing I like to do on this show is have um, guests from time to time to also be your guide and to give their insight and perspective on where they are at right now. So today I'm very excited to introduce to you Amy Dreyer. Amy, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're up to these days? Okay, so I'm an artist. I'm a painter. Um, I've been artistic ever since I was a young person, a, a child, and I'm a practicing full-time artist, although not quite as full-time right now because I'm also a new mom. So I'm sort of juggling my life and my art and my little one. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I've been painting for quite a few years. Um, I show in a number of galleries throughout Canada and um, yeah, I, I, my works are very expressive, very colorful. Um, big canvases, well, big canvases are my favorite, but I try to do a variety. <laughs> um, yeah, I was in Germany last spring uh, doing a series. I was looking at German expressionist women painters at the turn of the century and doing a series of paintings of women at the same time. And so, yeah, I'm just working away. Um, I've started the new year with a whole series of commissions for people. So I'm working away at those. Um, yeah. So I'm painting. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Amy, your paintings. I just love, I yeah. actually invited Amy to be on this show at her, one of her shows here in Calgary. And, uh, I'm a big fan of giant art as well. I love big canvases. And if we had any room left in our condo for paintings, yours would be <laughs> hanging here. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. That's but great. I just, I love your art. I love the expressionist. I love I loved the last show that you did and uh, I'm wearing a striped shirt in honor of my favorite painting that you did. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, Beautiful that's woman. Funny. And I love the bicycles and oh, I just, your art is, it creates um, intense emotion for me as a viewer. So I just felt like I wanted to have you on the show and hear mm. about not just your art, but your life and, um, but rave about your art and spread the word. And you, when Amy gives you the website <laughs> at the end of the show, you have to go see it because it's just stunning. So I'm really glad to have you here. Cool. Yeah, well, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I love to get our guests on the show to share a current favorite self-care practice. And we were going back a little bit by email back and forth about this. So I'm curious to hear what you have to say right now as a new mom. Well, yeah, so um, definitely self-care has been a little bit more challenging now that I have a little person in my life who's looking at me for um, everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so um, I, I kind of looked back to my, what my mom did when I was a kid. And she, she said that she used to get up really, really early in the day. And just so she would have a bit of time for herself. Mm -hmm. My mom's a super early riser anyway. She goes to bed at like eight o'clock and then gets up at 5.30 or even earlier sometimes. And um, I, I actually find myself doing a similar thing, um, getting up really early in the day and going to bed really early. And I just have that time, um, for myself, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, to answer emails or to, I sometimes take a bath just in the dark. Oh, that sounds <laughs> um, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, just with like a, like a tiny light. Yeah. Um, and then I've been going to yoga with this woman, um, a couple days a week and I meet with her at 6 30 in the morning and uh, I prepare the night before I have all my clothes laid out at the door I kind of get dressed in the dark of our house and I sneak out before anyone's awake and I go to her house and she's a pretty magical person she seems to have kind of this understanding of you know the mysteries of the world um, and so I find that being in her presence is kind of a uh, healing 
uh, in itself. Um, but just having that quiet space with her um, to move my body, which is much more sore than it's been um, really ever because I'm always lifting a little guy and carrying him and my um, you know I used to do yoga almost every day of the week and now it's just less right so um, yeah so moving my body feels really um, empowering right now and having that quiet space um, I felt guilty leaving initially, leaving the, you know, leaving Micah, leaving my family. But I feel that it's ultimately better for everyone um, if I go and if I, you know, take care of myself and then come back and I'm stronger for it um, all around with my family, of course, and also with my work. So, yeah. Oh, you said yeah. so many rich and delicious <laughs> and important things there, Amy. I want to talk yeah. about them. <laughs> So uh, if I think back to when I was a new mom, yeah. I don't think I even knew about the word self-care. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's more of a, a more, um, my daughter's 13. So I think 10, 15 years ago, it wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I did not do anything for myself. It was all about for my daughter and for my husband. And I got lost. And so I really appreciate and value what you're saying here is mm -hmm. um, that yes, you felt guilty. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, that guilt is not as powerful as filling yourself up so that you can give more fully. Mm -hmm. And it took me kind of 10 years to learn how to do that. And I started going to a lot of personal development courses. Mm -hmm. And I would feel guilty each time. And what mm -hmm. I learned to do is to say, okay, guilt, like mm -hmm. treat it like a an entity or a person or an energy and say, if you're going to be here, come mm -hmm. on along for the ride. I'm going anyways. And yeah. that really helped ease things up around that emotion. I think for some reason there's sort of this, um, especially for moms, there's this expectation of perfection. There's a lot of pressure on women to be these amazing moms um, and of course, I want to be an amazing mom myself. I want to do a really good job taking care of my son. And um, but you know, I I just I think that the pressure is a little unfair, and it causes this um, strange guilt for people that um, you know that we don't deserve. <laughs> right. And um, yeah, I, I think the fa the the imperfection of of being human is okay. And, you know, with my, if I, if I'm tired or something, then I think that, you know, my husband can help or like, we can kind of juggle, you know, taking care of our, if our little one and not have everything kind of fall on my shoulders. Yes. Uh, and I think a lot of women feel like they have to carry kind of the load of the family. And there's still that sort of expectation in our culture to, to, for women to do that. Yes. And so, um, yeah. And so I just think that's something that we, uh, that you can recognize and then say, okay, well, well <laughs> I'm going to share the load. With Absolutely. Others. And that's okay. And, you know, today my little one's out in visiting his grandparents with my husband. So I think that's a good thing. Um, and he, you know, I miss him, <laughs> but I, I also think that I, I have some time to do my work and I have some time to talk to you and, um, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to be guilty for that. And I think I'm a better mom for it. So. Absolutely. And you know, it's not, I don't think it's very many cultures where we sequester ourselves off and expect ourselves to do everything plus have a career. Like yeah. think about how humans are raised or have been raised traditionally. It's mm -hmm. in a community and you can pass them off to anyone in the community. And now these days we just have to be a little bit more creative of how we do that. But yeah, grandparents and making connections. And mm -hmm. um, as you were talking, I was thinking about this one circumstance because I felt like when I had my baby, I also um, donned this superwoman cape that I'm going to be but yeah, this amazing mom that does everything for everyone and who me? No. <laughs> and I was at this baby group and there was another mom there and she just looked at me and she said, do you ever even cry? I'm like, oh. what are you talking about? And she said, well, it seems like everything is going so well for you. And it seems so perfect. Like you put on this brunch for us and everything is beautiful. And 
that comment has really stuck with me. I said, of course I cry. I cried for hours last night. Oh my God. <laughs> but just having this front that, and this image that I, I didn't let people in. And so that's why I, I just totally honor you for being in the thick of it and coming on the show to talk about it and let people know that it is okay to question yourself and it is okay to feel guilty and it's okay to keep on doing what you love and do what it takes to create time for yourself like you're doing. I love the dark bath. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> or yeah. you have to move your body. And yeah, I just feel like this is such an important message because I know I did it not in a good way. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I teach creative self-care because I definitely is someone who needs to learn about it too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's a learning process for all of us, right? Like, we Absolutely. Just, like fall and then, you know, reestablish and, you know, get back up and keep going. <laughs> so. Yes. So I'm curious, Amy, did you have a plan to continue to take care of yourself? Did you know that you still wanted to do yoga and you still wanted to paint or did it kind of fall away and you're like, oh my gosh, I totally have to get back to this. How did it happen for you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I definitely had a plan to maintain certain aspects of my life that were, um, kind of my, my essentials and yeah, definitely my art is, is kind of my core mm -hmm. sort of something that, that I've always been passionate about and kind of, um, you know, it's been, yeah, just something I needed to inter, you know, interconnect with my family and, and stuff. And then, um, the yoga practice I started maybe about 10 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. And I just found that for my mental health, that was kind of like helping and, you know, not just like for my body and for, yeah. So I think it all had to be kind of integrated mm -hmm. um, as part of, um, my life. And yeah, at first when, when Micah came into our world, it was, yeah, like just kind of the basic needs, like, yeah. <laughs> sleeping it was a you know challenge and yeah there was a lot of stuff that was sort of falling away and then it was kind of like reestablishing kind of some of those routines and stuff and especially now that he's starting to sleep more yay uh, yeah yeah we're we're doing like a sleep schedule with him so yeah. that helps with um our mental sanity mm -hmm. making sure he has sleep and all that stuff so and making sure we have sleep, of course. So, um, yes. and then within that structure, um, he's, uh, you know, he's getting sleep, I'm getting sleep, and then we're able to kind of um, work more on our own stuff. Like, I'm able to do my own thing more now, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it just gets incrementally easier. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, I remember one very wise woman said to me when I first had Zoe, she said, here's my advice for you. You didn't ask for it, but I'm going to give it to you. So my advice is make your list of things to do, cross off half of it, and then be happy if you get one thing done. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. And for me, that was so valuable because I came from teaching where I was getting tons of stuff done every day. And then all of a sudden my days changed to diapers and laundry and I could sleep and I was just yeah. lost and forlorn. <laughs> yeah. For and sure. I could see, oh yeah, I did get one thing done that I wanted to. Hooray. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so uh, we're going to pause here for a quick commercial break. And when we come back, Amy's going to share her story of courage. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Thank you for sticking around and it's going to be <laughs> worth it. Yes. So Amy, I love to get guests on the show to share stories of courage, whether they're monumental giant things or everyday courage. That's actually what I'm really interested in is what it takes to get through just fear and move to the other side. And the reason I like to get guests to share these stories is because it's so important for us to acknowledge that we are courageous and cur courage is an energy that everyone has and we get it in different doses i think at the beginning of our lives but it's something that we can work on we can increase our courage we can increase that muscle flex it learn how to move through situations and circumstances that scare us and 
always, I have found when I've moved through fear, what's on the other side is so much better than I even anticipated. Mm. Plus it wasn't as bad as the thoughts that came up of what it would be like to move through that fear. Mm. And so Mm. I feel like it's really valuable for us to hear each other's stories of courage to um, make more of that energy available to us. So I'm looking forward to hearing yours. Oh, cool. (laughs) Um, Okay. So when I was thinking about this question, I was thinking of sort of the big the big decisions in my life and how they kind of structured everything. Mm. For example, becoming an artist, which was a, like a, um, a decision I made when I was pretty young and somewhat innocent yes. of what that really meant. Um, when I look back now, obviously I know kind of more of the risk that it it involved. Yeah. Um, but when I was younger, I think I, I didn't really know as much and people warned, you know, were warning me like, this is a really, in, you know, unstable job and, and stuff. But, um, I, I think I just felt that it was my purpose and mm-hmm. I kept doing it, um, and wanting to do it and pursue it. Um, and I guess there was a courage in that. There was a naivete in, in, at that time and kind of a determination and a fierceness um, that, that pulled me through and, uh, or sort of got me started. And then as I, as I sort of progressed and had a studio and was painting, there was this kind of um, a living with the unknown that became part of my um, everyday um, experience. And that, that in itself is quite... Um, scary Mm -hmm. Uh, and and I kind of realized that you know being an artist is really like a lot of living with the unknown forever (laughs) many components Um, and the other big decision of course was getting married and I remember the night before my wedding I was terrified um, and I was I had some girlfriends we were all um, staying in a hotel together the night before um, and I was really scared because I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. And I, I just, I didn't take that commitment lightly. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, My sister was holding my hand and I was just like, here we go. Like, I'm going to do this. And um, like, I love Aaron to bits and I'm very glad for the decision, but I I just didn't take that decision lightly. Um, And I was pretty scared. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, of course, is bringing a baby into our life. And Um, and all that that kind of entails and the responsibility for another human, um, is absolutely terrifying (laughs) and we're a bit older. So we have shifted our life quite a bit. Um, we kind of had our life, you know, we had a lot of patterns set and, um, my husband and I were talking that, you know, if we didn't have children, then we would be happy with where we're at. And then, then here we are. (laughs) So, um, and, uh, and we're very happy with that decision and that commitment. Um, but I think those big, those sort of big commitments, um, structured the rest of my courage, courageous decisions within those, Mm -hmm. for example, becoming an artist, I have to, you know, I'm committed to that and, um, I'm committed to my practice. Even if I don't want to do art, sometimes I feel that it's a commitment that I have to go back to. And, and that, that, and that, that isn't always easy. It's like, it's a hard, it takes the courage, takes courage to keep going, um, and to, to create something new, to start a new project, to let go of a body of work. Um, Mm -hmm to kind of finish something and let it go to present it and, and let the work be out there, let the work sell, um, you know, let it go. And then to start again, it's like a kind of a, my studio ends up empty and I have to kind of start all over. And, and that stage is really hard to kind of um, have nothing and kind of s- sort of get a momentum going. And it takes a lot of courage to go into the empty studio and kind of keep going. Um, you know, being committed to your partner is a, you know, take some courage because they, they see, they see you for everything that you are. And that's not always like very <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> they bear witness to your life and, and vice versa. And um, I think that takes courage to, um, 
to be real and to change. I think the main thing in a relationship is that it's always changing and change is hard. And, uh, you know, just kind of you change, they change and you change together. And, that, and just that constant um, movement in the relationship can be really, um, yeah, it just can be hard and you keep going and you figure out ways to, um, to love one another, I guess, <laughs> to yeah. forgive each other. <laughs> yeah. Forgiveness is a big, takes a lot of courage. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I just have a cat that came up on the table. <laughs> I um, get the benefit of seeing it. <laughs> yes. Um, I think, uh, um, and taking care of a little one takes a lot of courage when he was recently sick he had a cold and I was so scared for his well-being and I just was scared that I didn't know what to do yes that I wasn't making the right decisions on his behalf and they called health link and you know we were just I was taking notes and yes. notes and trying my best to you know care for him properly and uh, yeah, it's scary because we didn't know, you know, he was, he just looks at us with complete utter misery. <laughs> <And> he's <laughs> like, why? Do something to solve it. Why? Solve this. Who knows? <laughs> why? <laughs> We're trying, you know, this is life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. So those would be my three big ones that mm. I was kind of working within and yeah. I love that you um, you were so thoughtful about that question, Amy, and I have lots of things to say <laughs> and questions. Yeah. So, um, and I love that your cat was just licking your shoulder. That was really Oh, yeah. Funny. She's very... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you said, yeah, lots of interesting things. So the first thing is, I'm curious about how you made the decision to become an artist because you didn't, like with all the decisions you talked about, you didn't take them lightly. You went into them with fear, knowing mm -hmm. um, that it was a, a responsibility of some sort. So um, how did you make that decision? Well, like, what did that look like for you? Uh, well, partly I feel like the, the art kind of decides you a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, so I was always very artistically inclined. I had a lot of kind of energy as a kid and I feel like it needed to be focused into something. Um, I can see that in, in our son too, like lots of energy and like, where will you focus, where will we help him sort of focus his energy? And for me, I, I was able to kind of take this and then put it into this, into my art as a kid and focused for long periods of time on drawing and making up stories and mm -hmm. sort of, um, I loved kind of storytelling. I liked the narrative. I liked, you know, I liked this combination of um, com communication through the visual language. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that I was always really drawn to that. And then as I got older, I'm like, I, I, I want this to be my my way of being in the world and I feel that if I can commit myself to this and really work hard then maybe I can make it happen and uh, like I said that I know it's sort of naive but there are, there were a lot of people behind me too like I had my family were very much behind me which is um, you know an absolute blessing right and so um, yeah, so I was able to kind of go forward, go study art at the Alberta College of Art and study in Scotland and you know, Eastern Canada and kind of hone my skills and hone my knowledge a little bit. And then from that, was able to start, you know, building a body of work and a kind of a style and, um, you know, just, yeah, find my, my way through my work. And the early years are quit pretty hard mm -hmm. because I just didn't really know what I was doing and you know galleries aren't really interested in super early career artists because they're you know they don't know they it's a it's it's a risk for them yes, right. and it's also um you know you don't even know really where you where you stand you're sort of developing your voice and so you need that time maybe to not be influenced by a gallery potentially. right so, but those are early years when you're sort of just floundering around and putting in the hours and putting in the time and making stuff is, yeah, those were the hard ones for sure. And I used to call my dad um, 
and I'd be like, why am I doing this? And he's, he's like, you know, this is, I, he, he really believed in me and I would cry on the phone with him sometimes. And he's like, yeah, just keep going. Like you're, you're meant to do this. And I was like, I didn't know I'm meant to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, <hard. laughs> so yeah, I feel like they were integral in those early years, helping me kind of believing in myself. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then, yeah, over time, I learned to believe in myself too. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. You said something that's so important for courage and for self care. It's all wrapped up in mm-hmm. that we're not meant to do it alone. And I think that's a theme of what you're saying here. Mm-hmm and our conversation is that we're not meant to do this alone. And for some reason, especially women, we get into this mindset that we need to be strong, independent women and prove to the world that we have value because we can do it all by ourselves. And that just is not true. We need a support system. And I love that your family supports you because that's not always the case with artists and people doing things that are outside of the norm of society. But I think that's so valuable that you found that support and you were willing to accept it to fuel your decision. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I think asking for help is a big one to sort of um, have a, have a community. When, when we first had Micah, I called my sister like the, you know, the next day of him being with us. And I was like, this is hard. (laughs) She's a nurse and, um, and she she came right over and she kind of brought me a, I don't know a smoothie or something and yes and I was like you know yeah I'm like here can you just hold him for a second I just need a moment yeah <laughs> and, uh, yeah so because I had been up all night yes so yeah so it was just um I feel like you can't do it yeah like you said you just can't do it alone and, no um, and yeah and so I feel grateful for community and, and we create our community too. I keep yes. reaching out and trying to meet new moms and, you know, get out of, I'm like, I'm getting out of the house with my, with the baby. I need to get, you know, like meet new people, kind of create this new community and find other like-minded people. And just, um, I feel like you can sort of carry one another. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. The other thing I want, I love that you said that I wanted to ask you about is the idea of living with the unknown. And as an artist, you do that quite a lot. Um, I think that's a valuable idea for anyone to be able to live with the unknown. Like if we try to get too attached to what is current, that can lead us down a path that is fraught with challenge and difficulty because things aren't how we thought they would be. So how, how would you say you've developed that relationship with the unknown to be at least okay with it? Uh, (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I, this is, that's probably, that's probably the courage part is the like extreme anxiety about things that you don't know. And, um, kind of even this coming year, I'm not, I'm sort of developing my plan for my work. And it is a little bit up in the air right now. And there's a lot of anxiety related to that. And I'm like, okay, I can handle, you know, that I don't really know the plan yet. I can sort of work around some of these things and create some structure and leave some things open and just kind of have faith in this process Mm -hmm. that, that it's, that it's going to be okay. Um, that I have support, that people have support and that nobody knows the (laughs) fate. We're in it together. Yeah. Um, And thank God, right? Like I just, I'd rather not know. Yeah. That wouldn't be fun. (laughs) So it's kind of, um, yeah, like it's every day is, oh, my mom said, don't look too far ahead. Don't look Mm -hmm. too far down the road. Like try to, try to be where you're at and that's all we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm say that to her so I think that that's good advice and you know I look I look ahead to make some plans obviously but I'm also trying not to um, worry about you know Mike is uh, where he's going to go to university yeah (laughs) I'm a little worried (laughs) he's only you know seven months I'm going to make a plan here Um, yeah, what you said sounds like great. Um, a great idea is to 
have a plan, a loose plan in mind, have a loose schedule, and then be okay if it works out differently. And I can really identify with that. Like I'm someone, as a teacher, when I was teaching, I was very planned down to the minute and everything was run by bells and I thrived in that. And then when I had my daughter, I was like, where, time is chaos. I can't do anything. For sure. sure. There's a big big shift because I I also really like structuring my days and having like a pretty, like a to-do list and a plan. And I found that becoming a parent, you have to like sort of be a little more flexible, maybe. Not, not, I'm not trying to, yeah. You just, I, I found I need to be some, you know, find some flexibility in my schedule. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't have quite as much time. So, um, I have to be efficient with the time I do have. Yes. So when he goes down for a nap or something, I'm like, okay, now (laughs) you can do this and this and this and this. (laughs) You know, so uh, so I try to be somewhat organized, but I also forgive myself for a little bit of the chaos. Yes. I remember <laughs> hearing someone say on the radio once, you don't have kids to make your life less stressful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think in the big picture, we have them so that they can teach us what we still need to learn about ourselves. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, a, it's a back and forth, I feel like you know, hopefully we'll teach him some things and he'll teach us some things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely. I'm sure. <laughs> He's already <laughs> paid us patience and love. Yes. You're yeah. so much. Well, Amy, I'm so grateful to have you open the curtain to this window of what life is like in these various capacities that you're living as a new mom, as an artist, as a wife. And as a woman who does prioritize her own well-being, even if it doesn't look like what it used to, yeah. and uh, just being present with what is, I'm so grateful that we've gotten this chance to discuss this. I just love talking about this kind of stuff. It's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I would love for people to see your art. So where can they find you online? Uh, so I have a website. My website is fragmentsofsoul.com. Um, I also show at Masters Gallery in Calgary and I show at Elevation Gallery in Canmore. And then there's a few, like a number of other galleries listed on my website. Um, yeah. So yeah, check out my website. I haven't updated it in a while, but I will eventually. (laughs) (laughs) But I do recommend you listeners to go and take a look because Amy's work is stunning. I, I just see so much of your energy in it and your approach to life. It's gorgeous. So please go look at Amy's website. The link is in the description to the podcast too. It'll be easy to click from there. And uh, yeah, just go immerse yourself in the (laughs) passion and the incredible skill that you have cultivated, Amy. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. I really honor you for doing it and going outside of your comfort zone and taking time and arranging your schedule to make it happen. I'm so grateful. Oh, well, thank you. I'm honored too. And listeners, I would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this episode, you can give it a like, you can become a script subscriber on whatever platform you're listening to, leave a comment, share it with a friend. And if you have a story, well, I know you have a story of courage. If you feel something tugging at you to share it, I would love to have you on the show. And you can apply by going to christinamarlette.com, scrolling down the main page, and there is a button where you can click to apply to be a guest. I would love to share your story of courage with the world, too. We do have people (laughs) listening from all over the world. So hello, global family. Thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to connecting with you again this time. Bye-bye for now. Bye.